I've been asked to speak on cervical spinal cord injuries, what's on the horizon. I want to start by thanking the organizers for giving me the opportunity to give this talk. What makes spinal cord injuries as devastating as they are is that everything about them plays out in absolutes. They are instantaneous, utterly disabling, and horribly permanent. However, there have been various advances and there are numerous things on the horizon on each aspect of spinal cord injury management, and let's discuss them over the next few minutes. In the field of pre-hospital and acute care, there have been a lot of advances and there are there is a lot in the horizon with regard to extrication, first aid at the site of the accident, immobilization, and evacuation and transportation to a medical facility. And we know that uh, uh, the pre-hospital care gives us an opportunity on improving outcomes, which no other aspect of spinal cord injury management does. There are emerging techniques for imaging, like diffusion tensor imaging for exon integrity, myelin, myelin water fraction for myelination, MR spectroscopy to evaluate gliosis or ischemia, and functional MRI for evaluating connectivity. Coming to surgical management, 3D printing, uh, is an option for fabricating surgical tools such as screw guides and creation of customized implants. It has a limitation of long production times and high costs. The current indications include complex surgeries like post-traumatic spinal deformities and revision surgeries. There's a limited application in routine spine trauma surgeries. Um, this uh, uh, also helps in customizable implants and uh, it lacks long-term data on clinical outcomes and cost-effectiveness. VR and AR in spine surgery also serves various promising functions in the realm of spine surgery, but these simulation systems remain in infancy. Even though we have the possibilities of having long-distance connectivity using VR, AR in spine surgery. Artificial intelligence has tremendous potential in revolutionizing comprehensive spine care. Evidence-based predictive analytics can help surgeons improve preoperative patient selection, surgical indications, and individualized post-operative care. In a trial of augmented reality for pedicle screw fixation with navigation, designed uh, Negan et al. designed a virtual roadmap that was superimposed on the surgical site of patients. And by installing two overhead stereo, uh, stereoscopic cameras, they coordinated intraoperative video with data sourced from the navigation's infrared tracking system. Pilot studies have been conducted as proof of concept in this regard. Then there is a freehand system which can be implanted as a FES device uh, for restoration of hand function in the C5, C5 and C6 level tetraplegics. There's an active receiver or stimulator which is placed in the chest wall. Eight leads come from the receiver under the skin to a connector site in the upper arm. They're joined to epimysial electrode leads passed under the skin from the forehand and hand. And the power and control signals are passed through the skin to the receiver or stimulator for a skin monitored coil. The subject controls the device by movement of the opposite shoulder using a skin surface mounted position detector. Mm -hmm. Then there are intraspinal pumps like morphine to treat pain or baclofen for spasticity and which can be delivered to the epidural space in a controlled fashion via the pump, via the pump in the reservoir. Uh, the trial injection of the drug via lumbar puncture is, one, is uh, initially given and then the reservoir is uh, placed subcutaneously in the lower anterior abdomen and a catheter placed in the spinal epidural space is then tunneled under the skin to connect to the reservoir, and the reservoir can be filled as necessary. When it comes to rehabilitation management, functional electrical stimulation uh, has been used um, for rehabilitation of patients in a large way, and there are plenty of new techniques which are on the horizon. Brain machine uh, interface involves performing mental tasks which produces activity detectable with electrodes placed on or in the scalp. It promises to aid paralyzed patients by rerouting movement-related signals around damaged or compromised parts of the CNS to control and or communicate with assistive devices and the environment. For example, a patient during attempted or imagined wrist movements 
use the signals to steer an electric wheelchair simulated in a virtual environment. Virtual rea uh, reality, in addition to a surgical tool, also provides a form of human computer interface that allows the user to interact with and become immersed in a computer generated environment in a naturalistic fashion. The various robotic assisted neuro rehabilitation devices, which have emerged and are on the horizon, uh, active leg exoskeleton, lower extremity powered exoskeleton, robotic, uh, weight, body weight suspended treadmill training, also ambulation exoskeletons, and uh, these exoskeletons help people not only move on level ground, but they can, when strained, also go up or down the stairs uh, per se. So this uh, is also a promising um, uh, therapy on the horizon. It's being used already. There can be standing and mouth control wheelchairs in the field of assistive technology, automated stair climbers, adaptive drivers with hand control system, and a host of other wheelchair, hoist or platform blades, swivel driver seats, special pedals, steering wheel knobs, and hand speed controls. There are also a number of environmental control units which tetraplegics who do not have hand function can use for get, becoming independent. There are sip and puff mouses which can be used for patients with a high level of tetraplegia. Similarly, voice recognition software can be used by high tetraplegics to type on a computer. For skin care, there is pressure mapping which is available, which helps to have an ideal seating surface uh, such that uh, pressure on the bony prominences is the least. Then there is uh, trans-anal irrigation, which is a peristine anal irrigation device which is used for chronic constipation and fecal incontinence. It consists of a control unit with a pump, a water bag, and a rectal catheter. In the field of community inclusion, there have been a lot of uh, recent advances and a lot is on the horizon such that these people become more and more independent in their activities of daily living and uh, the community inclusion becomes easy. Telemedicine has come a long way, especially during the COVID pandemic. And uh, the patient satisfaction has been very high with this. And it has been a prefer preferable option for a subset of patients. Coming to regeneration after spinal cord injury, uh, there are rapid and significant advances in the uh, area of neuro restoration over the last decade. Uh, mainly focused on neuroprotection, neuroregeneration, and adaptive plasticity. We know that there is a primary and a secondary injury cascade, and depending on the various stages of uh, uh, spinal cord injury, there are various barriers for regeneration. These differ across the, the various phases. In the field of neuroprotection, there have been pharmacological therapies like rilozol, which is a repair of conduction deficits, magnesium, again, which, in, which inhibits the barrage of action potentials, minocycline, fibroblast growth factor, GSF uh, factor, and hepatocyte growth factor. Riluzol is a sodium channel blocking agent used in treating amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, but has been used in phase one, two, and three trials, uh, but the results are still to come out. Minocycline, a tetracycline antibody with significant anti-inflammatory effects uh, has been used in phase two and phase three trials. And uh, uh, the results are still not out, but it promises to be uh, uh, having significant effects. Then there can be non-pharmacological therapies uh, uh, in neuroprotection. Therapeutic hypothermia involves rapid cooling of core temperature to 32 to 34 degrees centigrade. Uh, a larger phase two slash three trial has been planned in this regard. CSF drainage attempts to prevent cord hypoperfusion in the cortical post-injury period by relieving pressure. Here again, a phase two B trial 
uh, has uh, been uh, is being undertaken, and it uh, it proves to be a promising therapy per se. Then there can be pharmacological therapies in neuroregeneration, like Rorock inhibitor, uh, which uh, leads to growth cone co uh, cone collapse of regenerating axons, neurite retraction, and increasing apoptosis. C3 transferase is shown to inhibit raw mediated action and a phase three trial has been done in this regard. Then for anti novo antibody, which is a protein present in CNS myelin that inhibits neurite growth, a phase one trial has been done applying humanized anti novo antibody and a phase two trial is currently in preparation. When it comes to neuroregeneration, we have spinal cord stimulation which can be done at various possible sites. Uh, it could be deep brain stimulation of a brainstem restorative feedback loop, which augments restorative effects around the injury site, or mesencephalic locomotor region can be stimulated to boost the locomotor central pattern generator. Uh, there can be uh, transcutaneous direct current stimulation or repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation uh, with direct motor cortex stimulation, which can be used for immediate production of movement or to induce adaptive plastic changes in the motor unit. Then brain machine interface that we talked about and peripheral nerve stimulation or spinal cord stimulation are other options. Spinal cord stimulation distal to the injury has been used for bladder control Proximal spinal cord stimulation can be used to block pain per se. Spinal epidural electrical stimulation, there have been various animal studies which have backed it. And it, there have been clinical studies uh, uh, where limited number of cases have been reported where uh, independent stepping, intentional overground walking, uh, and even unexpected voluntary motor control and independent standing without a spinal electrical uh, epidural stimulation, which was noted in these studies. These studies suggest that spared structural connections at the site of injury, which were functionally inactive, may be capable of modulating the excitability of the sensory motor networks below the level of the injury. A surgical stimulator is placed subcutaneously in the anterior abdominal wall and wire leads tunneled subcutaneously and connected to the stimulator. Postoperatively, mapping is done to find the right amplitude and frequency in the right electrodes in the 16 electrode array. And there is aggressive rehabilitation in training sessions where the patient uh, uh, goes, uh, undergoes uh, rehabilitation in order to hasten recovery. Uh, so uh, spinal networks at the site of injury can be reactivated even many years after injury. And even in complete spinal cord injury, there may be structural connections which are spared at the site of injury and which get reactivated with spinal epidural electrical stimulation. Locomotor training improves the motor ability of chronic spinal cord injured individuals as compared to locomotor training alone. However, larger trials are required to draw a definitive conclusion. Spinal cord stimulators are also available to treat chronic pain and have been well documented in the literature. Diaphragmatic pacing and phrenic nerve stimulation are techniques which are available to wean the people off the ventilator. Similarly, sacral anterior root stimulator provides stimulation of S234 in order to provide bladder and bowel control and sexual functions. Cell therapies have also been tried and there have been various uh, clinical uh, uh, trials, including rand uh, autologous bone marrow cell transplantation and autologous mucosal transplantation and various others. But a single approach, it has been postulated, may not be successful in achieving spinal cord injury repair. There is a need for multidisciplinary involvement involving a multifactorial approach including cell populations, scaffolding material, matrix, growth factor supplementation, and scar removal in order to address this situation. To, to summarize, investigating new avenues for facilitating functional and neurological recovery after spinal cord injuries 
is currently the focus of several clinical trials. One can look forward to the results of several trials, some of which have gained worldwide attention. There are numerous possibilities. With evolving technologies, the advances in spine surgery will have new doors opening every day. Achievements which were only a scientific dream a decade ago are now becoming a reality. So as the technology evolves, the target of making a complete cervical spinal cord injured patient totally independent may be realized in the coming years. That's true about the horizon. Every step leads you towards it, but you can never quite reach it. But maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's nature's way of reminding us to never give up, to always keep striving in order to make life after a spinal cord injury happy, meaningful, and worth living. Thank you for your patience. Mm -hmm.